I'm Kyle Northern. I'm joined by UFC lightweight Joe Selecki, who is set to face Austin Hubbard at UFC on ESPN 15, August 22nd. What's up, Joe? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Ready to go. Just uh, finished a really hard practice up here at Gym O, and then we have one more day, and then we recover and we head out to fight week, so I'm pumped. Yeah. How, how's your summer been going so far? Good. Really good. You know, uh, the little hiccup with the canceled fight, and that, that was terrible just because I was ready to go, but... Um, I think it's kind of been a blessing in disguise. We got to train a lot more and uh, spend more time at home and just, you know, refocus, get ready, and come back out ready to go again. So it's been great. Yeah. You mentioned that minor setback with, with the injury, but the fact that you still got rebooked with Hubbard, I mean, you got to be pretty happy with that, that, you know, you're just preparing for the same guy you're preparing for before now. Yeah, absolutely. And I was talking about it the other day. It was like, uh, A, getting another fight worth of footage to watch on him, but – um, getting to watch that kind of with the adrenaline of like, I was on edge watching because I should have been in there. So it was like almost seeing, you know, sometimes you watch guys getting ready for a fight and you see them as like these unbeatable or whatever. But I was watching it from if I had to go in there that night. And so um, just cool to get a different look and get that first little, uh, not, I didn't have like adrenaline running or anything, but I was like super into it. So it was just good to get him to see more footage on him, see him, uh, you know, more recent and uh, just know what I'm in store for. So I'm super pumped it got rebooked. And, He's a tough guy, definitely a great opponent, and uh, it's cool that I get to fight him coming off of a win now, too. So it'll look better for me when I'm able to go get the win. Yeah. And, you know, you talked about how you kind of were, like, visualizing yourself in there. Uh, would you have won that night? Uh, yeah, I'd like to believe so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he looked great, but, um, you know, he had a really tough guy in front of him, but that wasn't the odds were definitely stacked against his opponent that night with the short notice. Yeah. And, uh I'm sure the adrenaline dump that came with fighting with no crowd, and it's your first really, really, really big fight like that. So, um, face, but um, we're just at different points in our life. You know, I don't have the, and this isn't a knock on him, but I don't have the luxury of being able to quit no matter how bad it gets. You know, I, I have a family. I have a, this is my job. I have to, I have to answer the bell. I have to answer the call. So, uh, we're just different people, but um, yeah, I definitely think I would have had a great night that night. Yeah. I mean, it's had to work out like pretty great for you too, because when you originally were going to face Austin, he was kind of coming off a loss. Now he's coming off, you know, a pretty impressive win. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, that's a lot of positive momentum for him. And um, you know, he seems to be really high on himself as well, not in a negative way, but he's coming in feeling good. So I know I've had the best training camp of my life, so it'll definitely make for a great fight. Uh, I definitely want to beat somebody when they're on the. Uh, so if I can do that, it's going. Yeah. Now, you say you obviously watched the fight. What did you kind of make of all of that, too? Because, like you said, you know, obviously, like, Roscoff, he kind of stole the storyline just the way that it had ended. But I felt like uh, Hubbard kind of got thrown to the wayside after, you know, having a, a pretty good win there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once he had him tired, he was putting together some really good combinations, and uh, he did a good job staying on him. And he weathered some early storms. He was in that uh, really tight heel hook. He had his neck wrapped up for a minute. and You know, he weathered the storm and showed that he's – definitely game and definitely a veteran with his experience so um yeah i think he kind of got disregarded in a sense because we saw the you know the panic between rounds and all that but you know some of that was definitely caused by hubbard putting on a great performance so um it kind of stinks for him but uh i think me me watching i definitely am giving him all the credit in the world because uh i have to i have to give him that utmost respect and know what he's capable of so um i definitely didn't disregard him but i think a lot of the headlines did. It was all about, you know, the other side of things when we should have been talking about the winner probably. Yeah. During the time when you were kind of like, you know, making your way back and looking for a fight, like, was it always Hubbard? Like, was that the guy, the guy you were kind of pushing for? No, it was just, it was pretty much just August or, or then coming back in the fall. You know, we talked about it uh, before my wife's having a baby in September. Mm -hmm. So I really, really wanted to be there. And especially the way with all the travels going and if it would have got moved to fight Island, yeah. You know, if, if it's been weeks either side of the due date, I wouldn't be allowed in the hospital. So uh, basically it was just August. So anything we could get in August. And we had a couple of different names and a couple of different dates. Originally it was like August 1st and a different opponent. And then he needed some more time just because where he lived, they were, I guess they weren't able to train as much. Um, they said another week or two. I was like, okay, I'll be fighting the 15th at the latest. That's great. And it's a you know huge card. And then it came back with like September 5th. So I had to say no to that, even though we had already said yes to the opponent. Uh, and then kind of, Last minute, even though I was in a training camp, they came back with Hubbard, which is just kind of full circle. So yeah, um, for sure. Really just staying ready for August, preparing for you know, preparing and hoping for the best, but 
you know, I was ready if I needed to, to take a deload week and then get right back training for the fall. So, um, either way we were ready, but it worked out perfect. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, who were some of those names? Um, I think one of them was Yancey Medeiros. Um, there was a few other ones that weren't offered, but they were thinking might've needed opponents. I don't even remember which ones those were. Um, I think one of them was like, I could have fought, uh, or, you know, it was just guys they needed opponents for. So my management, uh, with Jason house, like, I think they kind of, if they get offered somebody for one of their guys who can't do it, then they come down the line and see who's ready. So I think like Lando Venata was in the mix. Um, it was Yancey Medeiros. And then uh, I think Yancey needed more time. He'll probably be back in September. I think he's, I saw he posted, uh, which just didn't work for me, you know? Uh, so just those are the two that stood out. But um, now it's Hubbard. So it worked out perfectly. We already kind of prepared for him once. Yeah, for sure. And, and like you said, you know, your, your wife's expecting it in, in September. I mean, what would it mean to, to kind of get a win, like, right before that? Oh, it would be great, man. It would be absolutely amazing because, uh, you know, the stakes definitely change with that that big life change. You know, we're super excited about it. I think it gives me a new purpose. You know, I've always had purpose. But sometimes in the past, it's been selfish about wanting to prove myself right or, you know, all these things. Now, when it comes down to it, that stuff's all well and good. But this is definitely, first and foremost, I have a job to do, you know. So that, that it's really cool to have kind of a redefined purpose on top of you know all the other great motivators that we always have but motivation's fleeting man and now i can look at you know my wife look at that child and know that it doesn't matter if you're motivated or not that's a very short-term feeling i think people look too much into that you got to get the work done you know so there's no excuse for me not come in my come in at my best come in fully prepared all the time all year long there's no reason to take breaks get heavy between between camps it's not stuff i do anyway but now if i was thinking about it later on in my career i'm not gonna do so, yeah, um, it's really cool. It's just a great feeling. It gives me new purpose. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of preparation that goes with that, you know, welcoming a, a child. But like for you, like how how has it been kind of preparing for that and also preparing for for this fight? Yeah, um, I was saying it. I did an interview with UFC.com this week, um, and I was saying like in our house, it's always been like this. Even since I was an amateur, my very first fight, this fighting comes first. It has to because um, I think you know like we see, and my wife definitely sees more than I do sometimes is what this could turn into for us. So, um, there is none of the good things without all the hard work, without the sacrifice of going away for fight week and, you know, during COVID or training, being in training camp when we've got to, uh, you know, get everything prepped. So, um, fighting's come first, you know, if I need to rest, I need to rest. And that's what we've done. We've kind of, you know, everything's prepped. It's really not that big of a deal. And she's been so great through it all. So, uh, really nothing's changed for me. You know, I do have to get, I guess I learned about what's called a push gift. I have to get her a gift for getting ready either before or after she pushes out. <laughs> so, uh, there's a little motivation there. Maybe we'll try and get a, uh, a performance of the night or something. But <laughs> other, other than that, I've, other than learning new things, it hasn't been like more workload or anything. You know, I've been napping great more than ever. Me and my dogs have been sleeping like vlogs and she's been working like crazy. So <laughs> it's all well and good in our house. Yeah. And I, I saw, too, uh, one of your teammates, too, uh, in, in Bukasagane, just earned a, a contract, too. Now he's making a quick turnaround, be fighting on the same card. I mean, that's going to be pretty cool for you. Oh, absolutely, man. He's such a, a positive personality to be around. He's so upbeat, and he, like, loves to fight. Like, we were talking about that today. We trained with him today. He was helping me out. And, um, we were laughing because, like, a lot of us, you know, we get so zoned in, and we're, we're tense, and we're nervous, and we're excited, and all these things. He's straight up having a great time all the time weight cut doesn't matter like he's just a crazy person you know <laughs> um, i thought he was on that card a we were super excited about him getting signed but b selfishly i was like jumping up and down because i'm like i get to hang out with him <laughs> yeah week. it's gonna be just fun to be around so uh, and we have the same head coach and jeff jimmo so uh he gets to bring you know i get to bring my two other corners besides jeff and then he gets to bring two other corners so we just get more of the team gets to be out there so it's gonna be a great time i'm really excited for him yeah. When was the last time that you had a situation like this where you fought on the same card as a teammate? Do you remember? Uh, gosh, probably in Myrtle. I only fought twice. Uh, we lived in Myrtle Beach, you know, for, for eight years. And I fought twice there. Once as an amateur and then once as a professional. And that was in 2017. And I think we had like eight or nine guys in the cards in our hometown. And that was pretty much it. Uh, I don't think I fought on the same card as a teammate in a long, long time. But now the crazy part is... Uh, for our team and our network of guys that we train with, you know, we've got John Salter, who I'm with riding up to, uh, we were riding back from Jimmo, it's fighting mm -hmm. Friday night, coach, uh, but he'll be in Connecticut fighting for Bellator. Saturday, Impa, then also me, and then Tuesday, another guy we train with who will be on the Contender Series, Jamie Pickett, uh, is that Tuesday. So within the span of like four days, we've got 
four of us going to work. So it's, it's kind of nice because as much as we all can't be in the same place at the same time, um, you know, we've got it covered with the coaches and the corners, and we all get to go you know, the same timelines together of peaking, cutting weight, being miserable, being nervous, whatever it might be. So, yeah, yeah, you, you kind of just you actually answered my next question for me. I was gonna say it, it's a pretty big weekend with guys on Bell Tour, guys on Contender Series after that. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be a really big week for us, um, and in, in a bunch of different big promotions, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, All right, John. I mean, a- anything before I let you go? No, man. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, just always want to shout out my team, you know, Salt Dog Jiu Jitsu, GMO, all the guys at Fitness Edge MMA have been great. Um, it's just been fantastic, man. It's been two, or I guess it's been the length of like three or four camps, but it's been two really hard training camps, preparation. So uh, I'm at my best because of those guys. I want to thank my wife as always, man. She's been fantastic. And just everybody that supports me. I, and especially when I had to pull out of the fight, you know, I had a positive COVID test. I was fine. It wasn't anything big, uh, you know, but it was just cool to see everybody reach out. A lot of people I didn't realize because. Uh, my management said to be kind of vague because they didn't want me to talk about the COVID test until we knew I was getting my negative test back so I can get sanctioned and all that. But um, a lot of people were concerned about my wife and stuff with the baby. So it was just cool. People I've never even met were reaching out to make sure we were good and everything. Just appreciate everybody that supports me, man. It's been great. It's been a heck of a ride. we got a lot more to go. So just really want to thank all of them. Yeah. Did you have, like, the symptoms or was it kind of like the whole, like, asymptomatic uh, scenario? I would definitely call it more asymptomatic than anything. I had a little bit of back pain and I was just feeling extra run down. And I really just tested to be safe because I didn't want to get to Vegas and find out get quarantined or get sent home. I never was competitive. I, I sparred, I think, once or twice with it. I uh, had a really hard wrestling practice with it for like two days. And, you know, I did it really hard during it. felt good. And then I would just go home and die for like 12 hours. So, uh, <laughs> But I was fine other than the entire day. It was all good. <laughs> 